Dungeons have always been a staple of the MMORPG genre. Absolutely. The idea of exploring ancient caverns, slaying mythical beasts, and looting weapons of legend is epic fantasy at its finest. And from a gameplay perspective, Search Dungeons have target. always been a convenient mechanism to drive group-oriented content. But among the thousands of dungeons the genre has seen over the past two decades, one this particular Black dungeon Desert. still remains a cut above the rest. I'm of course referring to World of Warcraft's Black Rock Depths. Yes. An underground city home to the Dark Iron Dwarves, BRD is a masterpiece of game design, whose standards have yet to be met even 15 years later. In this yep. video, we'll be analyzing the genius behind the Dark Iron City and why many players, myself included, consider it to be the greatest MMO dungeon of all time. Well, they don't consider Before it we can me, understand the brilliance is. behind BRD's design, we must first examine vanilla dungeon philosophy as a whole. The original World of Warcraft dungeons were vastly different to the five mans of today. The old instances felt they're like they're not bent for built for speedrunning. Like every dungeon nowadays is built for speedrunning. Like I don't know about you guys, but I get kind of tired of that. Like they're all built for Mythic Plus. There's never anything expansive actual places in the world, and could draw players in with more than just flashy mechanics. They often included hidden encounters, epic quests, and special loot drops that gave them a unique identity. But That's even right. by vanilla standards, Blackrock Depths was a dungeon like no other. Mechagon Boasting was, nearly Mechagon 20 bosses cool. across 18 different rooms, BRD was simply massive in both scope and scale. Fuck While yeah. most dungeons had around 6 or 7 quests, BRD had 41. More impressively, the zone's content spanned a whopping 12 levels from 48 to 60. This wow. means that Black Rock Depths was relevant wow. content for virtually I didn't even half know that. the game. Just that point alone Holy is enough shit. to make BRD one of the grandest dungeon experiences in gaming, That's but insane. its size is just the beginning. Behind this monolithic beast of an instance was a plethora of secret bosses, extravagant events, brilliant level design, epic lore, and juicy, juicy gear. Let's start with BRD's famous level design. You've probably seen the famous BRD map showcasing the dungeon's layout. As impressive as the map is, it pales in comparison to the awe-inspiring details on the ground floor. Upon zoning into the instance, players will immediately notice a metal door on the left side of the starting room. The door is obviously Didn't you need locked. A key for that? By placing an obstacle at the entrance yeah. of the dungeon, the designers have deliberately created a sense of wonder in your mind. What's behind the door? Is there a chest? A quest objective? Perhaps They're a thinking. secret boss? I don't know, but I can't wait to find out. Yeah, Shadow and unlike many games that grab your attention, only to let it slip away with poor world design, BRD continues to deliver. As you venture deeper into the twisting labyrinth, the mystique of the Dark Iron Capital begins to reveal itself. Beyond the first trash pack is a detention center, where prisoners are left to so hang good, from the ceiling. Around the corner is the infamous Ring of Law, where judgment is passed upon the enemies of the Dark Iron Clan. And an if you actual, escape judgment, you'll stumble upon the Grim Guzzler, heart of the city and dormitory dungeon. to the merciless jailers that surround you. The various rooms and corridors of BRD are so immersive that the dungeon doesn't even feel like a dungeon. It feels like an entire leveling zone, packed full of interesting characters, evolving storylines, and most importantly, secret passageways. Remember that door I showed you? It can be opened using the Shadow Forge key, a quest reward obtainable only through death. There are several other keys that, that unlock so secret routes cool, throughout the man. dungeon, such as the Grim like, Guzzler key, which is acquired by pickpocketing the Guzzler's barkeeper. By incorporating these secret doors and keys into the zone's layout, the original designers had made BRD one of the most replayable dungeons in history, as with each visit, a player could unlock more and more of the dungeon's this was content. So good, man. Additionally, the keys granted players a heightened sense of agency, as certain keys could be used to bypass undesirable areas. This brilliant design philosophy sure, keeps players coming back for more, while still delivering fresh, exciting gameplay. This was I could talk about BRD level design for hours, but I think you get the Same. point. Before Same. I move on though, I do want to recognize the genius behind BRD's layout, and that would be John Stats. John was the first 3D level designer employed by the WoW team back in the early oh, 2000s, okay. and he's designed legendary zones such as Black Rocks. Just real quick, what the fuck happened to the key ring? Like, what the fuck happened to the key ring? You remember the, remember the key ring? Like, I felt good. Like, I would honestly, I would collect every key in the game. There was an achievement for collecting every key in the game. It was called the Key Master. And I had that achievement on like the first day that it came out. Like, man, I think about like all these little fucking things, dude. And it's just like, 
there were so many like RPG elements of the game, like keys and just like attunements and all this stuff, like resistance gear, uh, defense rate, like all this. Man, it just is fucking depressing to to remember. Like, dude, I cannot fucking wait until Classic comes out, man. And like, honestly, it's about to come out, right? It could be any minute here. But like, I cannot wait till it comes out and people see how fucking good that shit used to be. And you have all of these casual bad players that realize that in Classic, they can actually handle it. Because in BFA, they don't have the reaction time to deal with the Firelands, or not Firelands, a Freehold trash mob. But in, in Classic WoW, that's a whole boss mechanic, right? And, and that's it. Like, the, the bad players that are complaining about Classic being too hard are the ones that Classic was really designed for. Fire, Skolomance, Blackwing Lair, Orson Gulch, and even Karazhan. The guy knows level design. Fucking and if you haven't Dude, that heard, guy made fucking he Karazhan. recently published a book called The World of Warcraft Diary, fucking which Karazhan. details the development cycle of Vanilla WoW. I've personally read the diary, and I can tell you it is an absolute must-read for any gamer. But yeah, Hell just a yeah. quick shout-out to John for crafting some of the most epic experiences in gaming history. Fucking let's get dude, back Karazhan to was one of the best. Level design too. wasn't the only. Dude, imagine this guy. He made BRD and Karazhan. Like, I mean, what the fuck else is there even to say? And out feature of the depths. The boss encounters. That's why were... he's bald, is because his brain is actually so fucking big, that the hair just it, it just gets out of the way. I'm serious. That that that's just that's what it is, man. Great too. While most bosses in vanilla were straightforward tank and spanks, BRD pushed the boundaries of encounter design by adding several unique mechanics. Examples of these mechanics would be the fire traps deployed in the Magnus fight, the cleverly narrow bridge used in the Incendius fight, and the creeping lava spawn mechanic in the Flame Lash fight. These mechanics might seem elementary today, but back in 2005, utilizing a boss's room layout as a weapon was unprecedented in the MMO genre, and the innovation didn't stop there. BRD also expanded on the concept of event-based encounters, which were used to break up the monotony of traditional boss fights. We already mentioned the Ring of Law. This Colosseum-style wave encounter was one of the first randomly selective boss fights in the game, a mechanic we would eventually see more of over the course of WoW's history. Thank God, we the need Lyceum more of this. event was also groundbreaking. The event is a callback to the Minds of Moria sequence in Lord of the Rings. Yep. It's just epic on a whole nother level, and showed yep. the potential of what dungeon events could actually be. But the moment that you walked into that room and you saw all of those mobs, there is nobody that ever did that dungeon back in Classic that didn't just say, fuck. Like, it's just like, okay. It's like you, you and you, at that point, you had been in the dungeon for like four hours. And you walk in and you look at the mines of Moria, basically. And there are these fire keepers that you have to kill. And the mobs are everywhere. And your tank is blind. So you know that these mobs are going to kill you. And you just do it anyway because it's for the quest. And this is all you have to do. Like, uh, it, it, it was just so good, man. My absolute favorite event in BRD would have to be the barroom brawl at the Grim Guzzler. Upon destroying the kegs in this small, secluded corridor, players will be immediately attacked by several Dark Iron drunks, turning an innocent room inspection into an all-out bar fight. Bear in mind, nothing in the game tells you to break these kegs. There are no arrows or menu prompts that direct you to do so. This is a completely hidden encounter, designed to reward observant players who took the time to explore their surroundings. And these bosses weren't just nameless NPCs. In Blackrock Depths, almost every boss in the dungeon came with a unique backstory. Ambassador Flamelash, who we mentioned before, is the servant of Sulphur and Harbinger, one of the bosses in the Molten Core, and the first of many Flamewalkers to be encountered in World of Warcraft. Now, why did they have so many of those in, in WoW? Does anybody know why? Because they probably ran out of budget to make new mobs. So they just added the same one and they gave it a different name. Yeah, they ran out of time. And so they just had to they just had to get something out there real quick. Like I didn't they make didn't they make molten core in one week or something like that? Like I remember reading about that. I I forgot who who said that or when I heard that, but I think yeah, they made molten core in one week. And and like imagine that. Imagine they make molten core in one week. That's like God. God made the world in seven days. Blizzard was only three days late on Molten Core. That's pretty fucking good. And now we have to wait, like, months. Like, it takes them longer to fix a small bug now 
than it did to for them to make a raid. I I, I just oh, man. Belgar, inspired by the Tolkien yeah. Balrog, was a molten giant dudes. pulled from the Firelands by Ragnaros himself to guard an ancient doorway, the purpose of which remains okay. unknown. And how could we forget the story of Emperor Dagran Tharasan, ruler of the because Dark I didn't Iron read Clan, the quest, that's how who I kidnapped Princess Moira Bronzebeard as a hostage before falling in love with her and dying by her side? All epic storylines that concluded within the dungeon. In hey. fact, Blackrock Depths was so rich with lore that most of Vanilla's raids were also connected to the city. Why yep. do you think the portal to the Molten Core was originally placed in BRD? Because Ragnaros was summoned to Azeroth by Tharasan. Why did the Anixia Attunement quest require so many visits to the Depths? Because, well, I don't want to spoil it. The point is, BRD wasn't just a randomly generated dungeon crawl. It was a storied expedition into the depths of hell itself and Fuck into the lives yes, of various dude. characters who were just trying to Fuck do the right yes, thing. Dude. If you want to learn more about the Fuck lore behind yes, the dungeon, dude. you can check out Noble's story video on Black Rock Mountain, which I've linked in the description below. It's actually really cool. So at this point in the video, we've discussed the genius behind BRD's immersive level design, progressive encounter design, and epic lore design. But we haven't talked about the most important aspect of any dungeon. Friggin' loot. Oh. Loot rewards are the biggest incentive there to pursue is. content. There it is, Blizzard dude. has even said as much. And when it comes to rewards, Blackrock Depths has some of the best in the game. Iron the Fulf. Hand of Justice, a trinket that drops oh, off the is dude. so good for some classes that it doesn't get replaced until AQ or Nax. Yeah, Iron is Foe is pre-rate best in slot for Fury Warriors and is also purple, so bonus points. And so I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to get Iron Foe because it's going to take too much time. And realistically, like I'm probably going to do BRD like five times and that's going to be it. Okay. Like there's no fucking way I'm going to do BRD m more than like five times. Right. A and also like you got to remember that I might actually tank for my guild because here's my thing. Okay. If I don't tank for my guild, then I can't rationalize giving myself the first Thunder Fury. Okay, I just can't do it. So that that's that's the main issue. But the problem there is if I can't rationalize Thunder Fury, I either have to rationalize Thunder Fury or Sulfurus. I can't do both, and I don't really know how I want to handle that. Uh, fun fact about Iron Foe during the Horde: the uh, you can do lava runs in seven to ten minutes. Emperor kills. Uh, I don't know about that, man. Uh, is Thunder Fury better than Sulfurus? Uh, well, yeah, because it's longer. The Mantle of Lost Hope, one of the best healing pre-raid shoulders in the game, also drops in BRD off of Lord Rakar. Yeah, so many good longer. items drop Everybody in this dungeon that. that BRD remains relevant even after your first Molten Core clear. And not just because of the boss drops, but also because of the rep rewards. You may have heard of the Thorium Brotherhood reputation in yep. Vanilla, but what you may not know is that Lockto's Dark Bargner, the faction's quartermaster, is the only quartermaster to ever be placed inside a Vanilla dungeon. The fa is that true? I think actually that is true. Yeah, because like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good answer. Probably. Actions rep rewards are also completely mandatory for raiders, as many epic fire resist you patterns and the fire plans resist. are purchased from Loctos. Yep. Plans for the epic two-handed nightfall axe, a high priority debuff weapon, can also be purchased from Loctos. The guy sells some good stuff. But beyond, dude, I just thought of the best idea for my my guild. I'm gonna have nightfall and I'll be an arms warrior, so I don't have to respec for PvP. And my damage doesn't matter because I'm applying the Nightfall debuff. So I effectively have no responsibility at all. I don't have to respec to raid, and I'm extremely valuable. What the fuck, dude? Sometimes I scare myself with how smart I am. Every rep paladin ever? No, we're not. I mean, like, the thing is, like, I want to have a good guild. So I don't know how many rep paladins we're going to. I mean, y y you know what I mean? Like, I mean, come on, man. Beyond all these tangible power based rewards is one that is intangible the privilege of sitting on Thorasan's throne upon completing the dungeon. Everybody the did throne it. itself is not lootable, nor Everybody does it grant it. you a buff, but there's something special about claiming a powerful seat after conquering your enemies. Everybody there's did something it. special about sitting on that throne.
BlackRock Depths is an absolute masterpiece of game design. To this day, it's still considered among many to be the greatest dungeon the MMORPG genre has ever seen, and I've gotta say, I have to agree. The dungeon even has its Fuck own special yeah. forge, for God's sakes, where you can craft oh, dude, a Sulfur's hammer talk part about that. of Sulfur's hand of Ragnaros. Dude, like you guys didn't even fucking know about this. Inside of fucking BRD, there is a special forge. It's called the Black Anvil, and you have to craft the Dark Iron Gear at the Black fucking Anvil. And so you had to go into this dungeon just to craft the gear. And if you wanted to make dark iron ingots in order to craft the dark iron gear, you had to go to the Black Forge or whatever the fuck it was called. It was so good, man. It was fucking beautiful. Like, we knew that? No, you didn't. It's truly a unique place shaped by brilliant and level design, weapon, yeah. innovative encounters, and some Skull of the best lore flasks. Vanilla WoW has to yeah. offer. Of all the adjectives I could use to describe BRD, only one comes to mind. Good. Genius. But thanks for watching the video, guys. Okay. If you liked what you saw, sub it up and stick around because we got more coming. A quick shout out to all of my friends on Patreon who help make videos like this possible. If you'd like to support these videos as well, I've left the Patreon link in the description for you. And for more classic WoW and vanilla content, you can check me out live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash tipsoutbaby. Have a wonderful day, fellas. I'll see you guys on Twitch. And as always, tips out, baby. I really do think that BRD is probably my favorite dungeon of all time. And I don't know, like, the thing is that, like, one thing that's going to be really good about Classic is it's actually going to give people that way to just compare vanilla versus retail right there next to each other. There's no kind of bullshit like, oh, well, you know, this was like back in the day or whatever. You're actually going to have both of them right next to each other and say, this was good, this is why, and compare it in real time. How shit Vanilla was? There's going to be some people that feel that way. I can guarantee you there are going to be people that, that start out playing Vanilla and they're like, wow, this is so great. And then they get to like level 24 and they realize that they have to group up with somebody and nobody wants to play with them. Or maybe they do dead mines and they have two tanks leave and, you know, like in their group and now they're mad. Or maybe they get all the way up to Scarlet Monastery and they spend 35 minutes running all the way up there, getting the, uh, getting everything done, right? They get up to Scarlet Monastery, their tank leaves, they hearth back because they wanted to find somebody else in trade chat. But then they realized that they didn't pick up the flight path to chill in point and they had to ride all the way back up there and they just quit the fucking game on the spot you're right there's gonna be a lot of fucking things and yes i don't know where that i don't know where that example came from i i don't know uh you know maybe somebody maybe somebody did that a while ago i don't know i don't know let's just let's just say that